What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In my previous video, I talked about a feature specific to Windows 11 that should give you better input latency in all windowed games, DirectX 11 and 10, 12 it's already included with. Some people have been asking me how exactly can I upgrade to Windows 11, specifically the Windows 11 Insider Developer Channel, in order to get access to this new feature and new features that come out like this. Before you even think about joining a Windows Insider channel, you should know what you're signing up for. There are three channels of Windows Insider. Normal Windows, you get updates every few months. The Release Preview channel for Windows 11 Insider, you get pretty stable versions of Windows, though of course these have features that are soon coming to the full releases of Windows 11 in a few months as soon as they get fully tested. The Beta channel comes with testers and early adopters, and it's great for testing new features, though it's not extremely cutting edge. When features reach the stage, more than likely you'll have a mostly stable experience. Then finally, we have the dev channel or developer channel of the Windows 11 Insider. Here you get access to the absolute latest tools and programs while they're being built in the development cycle. This often comes with tons of bugs, tons of issues. If I open up the Feedback Hub program over here, head across to Feedback, you'll see just how many issues are currently in the Windows 11 developer channel. If I hit Start and X, it'll crash Windows, or at least the Windows Explorer, closing all of my active folder browsers, Issues with combining app icons, weather app issues, stutters, cracks, and pops, and audio that quite a few people are having issues with, I think including me as well. This will probably get fixed, but you're signing up for a lot of bugs. If you're going to be using the developer channel, it's a very good idea to install the Feedback Hub application. That way, you can give Microsoft direct feedback about brand new features, and of course, you can log bugs, suggest features, etc. You're actually going to be helping the development of Windows this way. As you can see, I've provided two bits of feedback already on specific issues I was experiencing. Anyways, now that you know what you're getting into, there's a couple of ways into getting into the Windows 11 Insider program. One way is upgrading from Windows 10 to the Windows 11 Insider program in one simple move. Then we can go from Windows 11, Normal Edition, to the Insider program. And finally, we can install Windows 11 Insider fresh, getting rid of absolutely everything. The first two, 10 to 11 Insider and 11 to 11 Insider, both should keep all of your data and programs intact. In fact, I upgraded straight from Windows 10 Pro all the way up to Windows 11 Insider Developer Channel. In one simple move, one simple install, it worked perfectly. I am experiencing a couple of glitches here and there, though I'm not sure if it's because I didn't reinstall Windows or just because it's beta channel issues. It could be anything. If you are going to upgrade, it's a good idea to do a fresh reinstall, but of course, if you're someone with a ton of programs and files, it may not be for you. So if you absolutely value performance, you may not want to go to the developer channel or beta channel, rather the release preview channel instead, and you'll want to do a fresh clean install using the third and last method in this video, which will get rid of all of your data. That being said, even though we are going to be keeping all of our programs and data using the first two methods, 10 to 11 Insider and 11 to 11 Insider, it's an incredibly good idea to make sure that you have not only all of your user data backed up, documents, desktop files, save games, etc., but also all of your program data too, settings and keybinds for different programs, everything like that back up absolutely everything you may need later. If you'd like a video on how to do so, make sure to let me know and I'll probably get around to doing it, showing you hidden places you maybe didn't know about backing up before. Anyways, now that you have backups and you understand what you're getting into, how exactly do we do it? Before we even get to downloading the Windows 11 Insider ISO or side grading from Windows 11 to Windows 11 Insider, we need to be a part of the Windows Insider program. In the description down below, you'll find a link to this page over here. All you have to do is on the register tab, make sure you can click register over here and fill in a bunch of details. I don't think it's anything too personal, but you just say, I think why you'd like to use it and you'll need a Microsoft account to do so. Then you can click Start Flighting or head across to the Flight tab over here. You'll read some information, you'll get told how to download Windows 11 Insider Preview ISOs, etc. and how to install it if you're already on Windows 11. This is what I'll be showing you first, then how to use the ISO to upgrade from Windows 10 to 11 Insider directly, and of course how to fresh install Windows 11 Insider. We'll get to that just now. Let's start with upgrading from Windows 11 to the Windows 11 to the Windows 11 Insider program. All we have to do is hit start, type in settings, or click the settings icon. And inside of here, head across to Windows Update. 
then Windows Insider program. If you're not already signed in on your computer, you'll need to do so now. And as long as you have access to the Windows 11 Insider program on your account, you should see a page that looks something similar to this. As you can see, Windows Insider account, it's my account over here. When you signed in, you may see an error about extra diagnostic information collection. How exactly do we get past that error? Well, on the left-hand side, head across to Privacy and Security, then Diagnostics and Feedback, and at the very top over here, you'll see some information. What we're looking for is Send Optional Diagnostic Data. You'll need to turn this on. Currently, you can see that I've got this disabled. That's because I used a Windows 11 privacy feature program, something like that, and it disables a lot of things and says they're managed by an organization. But simply turning this on and heading back to the Update tab, then Windows Insider Program should give you access to everything over here. Then all you have to do is expand the Choose Your Insider settings and simply choose Release Channel, Basic Channel, or Dev Channel, depending on what you'd like. If you're unable to select certain options here, there are ways around this using the registry. And if you'd like to see a video on that, I'll make sure to create one and link it down below. Though more than likely, if you just installed Windows, signed in with a Microsoft account that has access to the Windows Insider program, more than likely you can select things here. And as soon as you select it, click update or whatever in the top right, you'll immediately download the latest updates and move across from Windows 11 to the Windows 11 Insider program where you'll have access to all new features of whatever channel you picked here. Super simple, you keep all of your data and your programs, or at least you should, hence the backup. Next up, how do we go ahead and install this fresh and how do we install it upgrading from Windows 10 to 11? Well, these are both two in one really. We need to start by downloading the Windows 11 Insider Program ISO file. So once again, heading back to this Getting Started Flighting page, you'll find a link to download a Windows Insider Preview ISO. You'll also find a direct link to this in the description down below. Head into the Windows 11 section here, and as you can see, this is the normal Windows 11 download page. At the very bottom, I'll expand more download options, and you can see Windows Insider site here. Clicking this link takes me across to the correct page. I'll have this one linked down below. What we wanna do is scroll down here, and at the very bottom of this page, after we've signed in, we'll see Select Edition. We can select an edition here where you can choose Dev, Beta, and Release Channel, not just for Windows 11, but 10 as well, the Enterprise and Home China builds for Windows. So make sure which edition you're downloading here. We have Windows 11 Insider, Dev, and Beta, but we also have Windows 10 Release Preview. Not sure why this is here, maybe it's a mistake, Anyways, we can get to the beta and dev channel this way. I'll select dev channel, then confirm, choose a language here, English, confirm, and then 64-bit download. Windows 10 Insider Builds should have 32 bits as well. Windows 11 is 64-bit only. We'll then be downloading a 4.6 gigabyte ISO or somewhere around there. If you don't know what this file is, don't stress, we'll get there in just a moment. There we go, the download's finished. So now for the last two methods. First of all, if you're upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, all you have to do is right-click the ISO and choose Mount. You can follow the steps for putting this on a USB and then running a setup if you may be worried, but this worked for me. I just mounted it and I ran setup.exe. Then I followed through with the installation and assuming the TPM requirements are met, things will work properly and you'll just upgrade to Windows 11 Insider, keeping all of your documents and programs. But let's assume that something goes wrong, you don't meet the TPM requirements, or you'd like to fresh install Windows 11 Insider. What do we do? Well, to get rid of this, I'll just right click and unmount it, eject, there we go. What do we do? So we'll need a program called Rufus. You'll find this link in the description down below. On top of this, you'll also need a roughly eight gigabyte USB stick or bigger. Heading across to the Rufus page linked down below, Simply scroll down until you see download, then click Rufus 3.17, or whatever version is available. Open up the EXE, and as simple as that, the program starts without even an install. Now, inside of Rufus, when it opens up, you'll be able to select your USB stick from the top dropdown over here. I only have a four gig stick, this is not enough. I'll need to put in an eight gig stick if I'm actually gonna do this, or above. Then boot selection, select a disk or ISO image, and you should see a select button next to it. If you see download, click the drop down and choose select, then click select. Now navigate to your download folder and double click on the Windows 11 inside room or selected and choose open. Now you should see some more options here. Image option, we can choose to 
do the standard Windows 11 installation, TPM 2.0 plus secure boot, or we can skip the TPM requirement simply by selecting this over here, or we could install Windows to go. This installs Windows to your USB. You can plug it into a computer and use Windows off of said USB. This is going to be very slow if you're not using something like a USB SSD, for example. I wouldn't recommend this at all. So choosing between standard and extended, which is no TPM, you can select whatever you need and the rest of these settings you can leave at default. Me, default is MBR, BIOS or UEFI. Advanced options is hidden, but I'll expand it so you can read what's ticked here. And at the very bottom, we can give it whatever name we'd like. I could call it literally anything or leave it as the default. Leave the file system as NTFS and cluster size as default. Here's the advanced options once more. Then simply click start. Then whatever USB drive you have plugged in will be completely wiped and you'll have the Windows 11 installation media written to it. That's exactly the same as right click mount, though this time we have it on a physical USB drive rather than a digital drive from the ISO file. Then simply plug it into a computer, run setup.exe, and you're able to install Windows 11 inside a developer channel. Or if you're installing it from scratch, you can turn off your PC entirely, plug in the USB, turn on your computer, and it should boot to your USB drive. If it doesn't, simply restart it once more and hit F2, F12, or delete, or whatever key it is to get into your BIOS options. When you do so, head across to the boot order tab, or open the boot order menu, and simply make sure the USB drive you plugged in is at the very top of the list. If you're able to hit enter to select it and boot straight to it, you can do that as well. After you've changed the order and saved it, you can choose save and restart. Then your PC will reboot and you'll get straight to the Windows 11 installation screen. It should be a purple or bluey background with a block right in the center and you can choose what drive you want, etc, etc. At this point, if you have external USB drives, before you get to that menu, it's a good idea to unplug them so you don't get confused later on. Ultimately, if you have only one drive, installation should be very easy, though do note, if you select the wrong drive and choose format, or you choose to install it to the wrong drive, it'll wipe all of the information on there. Because this is a clean install, you will want to make sure to back up that drive entirely before installing to it. That being said, yes, we did use Rufus to get around a TPM requirement. And if you are using that method to upgrade from 10 to 11 Insider, 11 to 11 Insider, whatever it is, bypassing the TPM requirement, simply plug it in and run the EXE instead. Don't boot your computer up into the installation screen. Instead, EXE is what you want. Anyways, all of that aside, upgrading to the Windows 11 Insider developer channel or release channel or beta channel should be pretty simple to do, and it's relatively straightforward. Much like any other Windows install, there's just a few extra steps necessary to actually get the ISO file. If you're already on Windows 11, upgrading straight from 11 to 11 Insider, it's super simple and basically seamless. Anyways, that's really about it for this video. If you'd like to request more content, do leave some comments down below. Mighty's been taking over here for troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.